Hey guys, Will from Boosted Media here. Today I'm gonna to be running you through my preferred settings for force feedback if you're running Dirt Rally 2 on a Mozza wheelbase. Now for today's example, we're gonna be running the brand new R12 direct drive base, but these same settings will work as a baseline for pretty much any Mozza wheelbase within the range. You can just fine tune and adjust things to your own personal preference. Now, what we're gonna be going through today is very subjective. You're probably not gonna find that my exact settings are gonna suit you. You will wanna spend a little bit of time fine tuning things to make sure that you're getting the absolute best experience rather than just copying what I'm doing here. But having said that, there are a few principles that I think apply to getting a good experience to begin with. So we wanna be focusing on trying to get as much detail out of the car as possible, feel all the things that we need to feel to drive quickly and consistently, and not turn things up to the point where we're muddying the experience. So under all circumstances, we wanna be driving the car rather than the car driving us, and that's what we're gonna be aiming for in today's video. So let's jump into Mozza Pit House to begin with, and then I'll run you through the settings for Inside Dirt Rally 2 as well. So starting off with our game force feedback intensity, this is the overall intensity of the force feedback that you're gonna feel through your hands. Now it's important to understand the difference between this setting and our maximum output torque limit setting. So the maximum output torque limit setting kind of serves as a hard limit to the maximum amount of power that the wheelbase is ever gonna output. Whereas you can think of the game force feedback intensity as more of a relative scale. So if we crank this one down, it's gonna shrink everything down, meaning that the weaker force feedback signals like road textures are also gonna be reduced. Whereas if we set a hard limit, all it means is that if we hit a wall or hit another car or something like that, we're gonna reduce the intensity of a big clunk through the steering. So what I would generally recommend is leave your maximum output torque limit set to the maximum. That way you're taking full advantage of the entire dynamic range available with the wheelbase. The only exception to that would be if you've got small children driving on your rig, you're wanting to just protect them from any potential injury. So for the R12 wheelbase, I've got this set to 80%. I found that anything stronger than that was starting to get into the situation where the car was driving me rather than me driving the car, but this will obviously depend on your own physical strength. If you're running an R5 or an R9, you're probably gonna run this at 100%. If you're running an R16 or an R21, you're gonna scale that down uh, to suit your own personal preference once again. Uh, so maximum steering angle for Dirt Rally 2, I set this to 540 degrees to match the uh, steering angle inside the game. Again, you can tweak this and adjust this if you need to. Uh, lowering the number will mean that you're able to turn the car a little bit more quickly, raise the number will mean that it requires more rotation to get the car moving. So you may want to vary it between tracks. I would generally recommend leaving it set to 540 though, just to aid in muscle memory. If you're changing it all the time, it can start to mess with your muscle memory a little bit, but pretty straightforward stuff here. Let's go down to the wheelbase settings and start with our basic settings here. So maximum steering angle, we already discussed that. It's exactly the same setting. I leave this set to synchronous. So the physical rotation of the wheel matches the rotation inside the game. Road sensitivity, you can see this has gone red and that is because it's influenced by the adjustments that we've made inside our force feedback equalizer, which we'll take a look in just a moment. I would suggest setting this as a starting point of eight. For the R12 and the R9, you might wanna max this out to 10 if you're on an R5, or maybe even lower it a little bit further if you're on a 16 or a 21. This is just gonna slightly reduce the road effects. I found that cranking it all the way up to the maximum with the R9 and the R12 started to introduce a bit of a robotic feel. That's not the fault of the wheelbase, it's just simply that the force feedback effects inside Dirt Rally to aren't as detailed as what you might be used to in something like iRacing or ACC, for example. So eight seemed to be a pretty good middle ground to me. Then game force feedback intensity, this is exactly the same setting as we were looking at before on the homepage. So we're setting that to 80% for our R12, 100% uh, for R9, R5 or lower if you've got an R16 or an R21. Maximum wheel speed. Now this is how quickly the wheel is able to react inside the game. Because we're doing a rally style game here, we wanna be able to rotate the wheel very quickly to catch slides and things like like that. So I run this maxed out all the way to the top of the scale. Wheel spring strength, this is not relevant to this particular title, simply because the game itself generates an effect to return the wheel to center. So we don't need to artificially create that. So zero is absolutely fine. Wheel damper, this introduces a slight dampening on top of the force feedback coming out of the game. So this, if you're feeling the sensations are a little bit too robotic or jerky, you can increase this to soften things down. If you go too far, it's just gonna add an overall kind of muted or dampened feeling to the uh, to the overall sensation of the force feedback. For me, I found about 20% was a pretty good balance. Somewhere between 20 to 40% is probably gonna be the sweet spot for most people. So then we jump across to the advanced tab, maximum torque output. This is what we were talking about before. So again, under most circumstances, you're probably gonna wanna leave this maxed out to take advantage of the full dynamic range available. Only exceptions would be if you're finding that 
crashes and things like that are just too powerful, then you can reduce or cap the maximum output here. And again, I would recommend doing that here if you're specifically trying to deal with that particular issue rather than lowering the overall gain force feedback intensity because if you lower this here, you're gonna be shrinking down the amplitude of all the effects, not just those powerful ones. Hopefully that makes sense. Steering wheel inertia, this is gonna depend on the particular wheel that you're driving with. We're running an RS wheel here, so we've just used the RS preset of 2800. That felt absolutely fine to me, so uh, I didn't really feel any need to change it. I did tweak around with it a little bit. It didn't really find that it made a massively significant difference, to be completely honest with you. Natural inertia, this along with the wheel friction adds a sensation of weight to the steering wheel. So natural inertia specifically will kind of encourage the wheel to continue to rotate once you physically physically stop rotating it. So it gives a sensation of the wheel actually being mechanically connected to something inside the car rather than just an electric motor. So 200% here feels really good to me, gives a nice smooth overall feel without adding too much weight and making it too difficult to steer and feel what's going on with the car. Wheel friction, I have this set to 15%. Again, just gives a slight sensation of being mechanically connected to something and just adds a little bit of extra weight to the wheel so that it's not just kind of flopping around in your hands. Makes it feel just that little bit more authentic. You may find you want to run a little bit more friction than this. But for quickly reacting to what's going on with the car, I found this value was very good. Speed dependent dampening. This is purely just a dampening effect depending on the speed that the vehicle's traveling. I have this set to 60% and uh, a threshold of 90 kilometers an hour. Purely a subjective thing. It's not going to have a large influence over the feeling of the game because most of the time you're going to be doing more than 90 kilometers an hour anyway, other than just in mid corner. But it adds a bit of a variation in the feeling of the steering. Again, just to add a little bit more authenticity. So then we go across to our force feedback effect equalizer. What I've done here is I've slightly increased the amplitude of these higher frequencies just to bring out a little bit more detail in the force feedback. Dirt Rally 2, again, as I mentioned before, doesn't have a lot of granular detail in road textures. It's kind of a robotic and lumpy feel to begin with. So boosting these higher frequencies just kind of removes a little bit of that and gives you a little bit more of a granular feel in the force feedback overall. And then under base force feedback curve, you have the ability here to fine tune the reaction of the wheelbase. Again, kind of tying in with what we were talking about before in using the entire dynamic range of the wheelbase. So if you're finding that you've got the right amount of power for stronger effects, like going over bumps and jumps and hitting walls, things like that, but you're finding that there's not enough detail in things like road textures, then what you can do is you can add a non-linear curve Curve here to boost the amplitude without affecting the feeling of the upper range. Now with more powerful wheelbases like the R12, I generally find that for me at least a linear feel feels best. If you're running something like an R5, you may benefit a little bit more from bumping up these. And that's simply just because lower powered wheelbases are gonna have less dynamic range to take advantage of. So you may find boosting those gives you a slightly better overall experience. And it is as simple as that for the uh, settings in Pit House. Make sure you save your preset, send it to your mates as well once you've got it all dialed in. So let's jump into Dirt Rally 2 now and I'll quickly run you through the settings there. Okay, so inside the game now, we're gonna go to Options, Input, click on our wheelbase. You can see here we've defined the basic controls for the wheelbase. Remembering again that Dirt Rally 2 detects each individual item as a separate thing that you're gonna configure. So if we go back out, you can see the pedals are actually configured separately, which is the reason why you don't see the accelerator and the brake mapped inside here. Uh, under advanced settings, we're gonna make sure that our steering linearity and our steering dead zone are set to zero. Our steering saturation is gonna sit at 100. This is extremely important. For some reason, Dirt Rally 2 defaults to, I think it's a 20% dead zone uh, on the steering, which means that you actually have to turn the steering wheel past 20% before you get any input, which makes it feel absolutely garbage. So make absolutely sure that you set that to zero. Then we're gonna go across to vibration and feedback. We're gonna make sure that device driver is selected as a force feedback override type. Uh, vibration and feedback turned on, obviously. Self-aligning torque, I like to set that to 90 just to take a little bit of the edge off. Basically, the principle here is you wanna be allowing the game to output as much of its own data as possible and then run the filters inside pit house on top of this to bring things down where we want to but where i found there are a couple of filters on uh, on the pit house side that weren't quite giving me what i felt was necessary i was able to make a couple of adjustments in here to just kind of bring things into alignment so self-aligning torque down to 90 wheel friction tire friction and suspension all set to 100 collision i cranked down to 60 the reason for that being that i wanted to take advantage of the full dynamic range of the wheelbase for all the other effects but i didn't want to be having my 
arms torn off every time I hit a tree or something like that. So collision crank down to 60 and then soft lock, I just leave that at 100. That's just gonna be the strength of our bump stop. And again, that is something that you can adjust inside pit house if you wish to do so as well. And then steering center force, make absolutely sure you have that enabled. That is gonna allow, as we were talking about before, the game to recenter the wheel rather than relying on the driver to do so. So it's as simple as that, guys. Really hope that these settings help you to get a better experience out of Dirt Rally 2. Let us know in the comments down below whether that is the case. If you disagree with any of the settings here, let us know what you would substitute. And uh, happy racing. See you next time.